Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I wanted to show you this before I get going because this is something I've been sitting around waiting for. I mean, you can't raise interest rates, you can't double and tri almost triple interest rates inside of a short period of time and not expect the real estate prices to eventually come down to match how you've raised those interest rates. And that's been a thing I've been watching. Like, how in the world has the housing market not been hit? Well, apparently it's starting to be hit. Texas homes starting to rapidly lose value. 125,000 price cut in less than 17 days. <clears throat> so there you go. Now, a little birdie, <coughs> excuse me, a little birdie told me that there's a rumor that Senator Elizabeth Warren is meeting with the Digital Chamber of Commerce today in Washington, D.C., why now? John Deaton for Senate is why now. Go to johndeatonforsenate.com and contribute to him. Remember, this woman would not meet. I remember, I remember the Blockchain Association tr trying to invite her to their blockchain event so that they could talk to her, and she refused. She didn't want to meet with any of the crypto industry. And now she's out on Bloomberg saying I, she would love to meet with the crypto. No, that's not how it was. She was refusing to meet with anyone and creating her supposed anti-crypto army. Then John Deaton announces his candidacy and now all of a sudden she wants to talk. Well, guess what? John Deaton is the pro-crypto candidate, Senator Warren, and there's nothing you can do about it. Now, everybody is, is all the Bitcoin narrative people are doing their rounds, okay? This is good for Altcoin hold actually, in my opinion, Bitcoin should be the altcoin. XRP take out the regulatory capture. XRP would be the king anyway, because that's where it was headed. That's why they stopped it. Now, but them lauding Bitcoin and doing the whole thing is going to eventually end up. I think I think it already is starting to hit the altcoin market, and so we we'll, we'll cheer for it all day long. Even though on this channel. We know that uh, we know that Homeland Security force they know who the four Satoshis are. They met with them. We know the whole thing is a lie. But like I've said for the last year or two, we just because we know that they know and that the whole thing's a lie does not mean that the price is not going to go up. Does not mean that that I, I, mean, I think six months ago I told you. That I was uh, that I had gone in. I had owned it some previously, but I had gone in and bought one and a half Bitcoin in my iTrust Capital IRA, who is one of my sponsors. But I had gone and I had bought some in my iTrust IRA, not because I don't think it's all a lie. I do. I did that because I think that I, I think that they. It, there's there's always the possibility that they will allow Bitcoin to live, and I do mean allow. People could crush it in 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 uh, one swoop. The fact that they know who Sato the four Satoshis are tells you that <laughs> they they can crush it. There's a reason that they're lying to the world about knowing who the four Satoshis are. That reason is what has always made me a little nervous. But for for our purposes right now, it's great. Bitcoin ETF get all the attention, get everybody talking, bring more people into the market. And so it's a good thing. Last year, and let's take a look at Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is rallying again. It briefly touched sixty-four thousand dollars yesterday, first time since November of 2021. Coinbase's app, by the way, suffered a glitch yesterday that left users seeing a zero balance in their accounts. Wow! Bitcoin's price dropped over four percent following that glitch. So, what should we think about Bitcoin here, Mark? Well, I can tell you right now, Bitcoin haters are eating crow right now yeah. because it's it's been on fire, you know, and, and Bitcoin. 
to your point about risk on, it's the ultimate risk on asset right now. I mean, it went from 51,000 to 64,000 in three days. <laughs> yep. most, thing, most assets do not do that. Um, but when you look at you know, the rollout of the ETF, it, it, it's or ETFs, it's very clear that demand is widening. And, and if you think about it, you know, in the second quarter of last year, there was over $20 trillion in 401ks and IRAs. Today, it's probably 22, 23 trillion. It's gone up since then. Prior to those ETFs being rolled out, you really couldn't invest any of those dollars into crypto. You couldn't buy Bitcoin through Coinbase, right? So now all of a sudden you have access to 22, 23 trillion dollars of wealth. Um, you know, I, I think Bitcoin, it, whether you believe in the fundamentals or not, the technicals are incredibly strong, very bullish. But the whole Coinbase thing does not inspire a lot of confidence, especially when one of the main use cases for, for crypto is that it, it, it's a hedge against the government confiscation of assets. And when you see your account balance go to zero, that's not good. But, you know, a, a lot of the biggest Bitcoin bulls out there, Maria, um, they're all for, I believe it's like decentralized Bitcoin, where you're running around with the Bitcoin on a thumb drive and it kind of takes out the risk of an exchange like Coinbase all of a sudden just having a glitch like that. So would you... Okay, enough of that. This is what I wanted to show you. Look at this tweet right here. There are 1.82 million Bitcoin in all the exchanges. Every day the ETFs are buying 10,000, or about 0.5%. In one week, that's 4% of the entire trading supply of Bitcoin. So now multiply by 12 weeks, half the supply, poof. Get the picture? Now, folks, what I want you to think about, what the Wall Street is salivating about this, folks. Do you think that they're going to stop at Bitcoin? Do you really think that they're going to stop at Bitcoin? They're staring at, at, at all this money and they're going, wait a minute. What if Bitcoin is doing this? What about what about some of these that actually have utility? What if we created ETFs around those? So right now they're pre presented with, uh, in my opinion, Wall Street has a choice of their next uh, ETF because there's only three that have any kind of reg of regulatory clarity in the un in the United States, but there's only one with legal clarity. So Bitcoin has fake regulatory clarity, just like Ethereum. They have they have the opinions of the current regulators. Okay, they have the Bill Hinman speech, but none of that is legal. Okay, without a lawsuit or Congress passing a bill, you don't have legal clarity. XRP does. So they have a choice between Chinese controlled Ethereum, which is for the next ETF, which has fake regulatory clarity, or American XRP, which has legal, real regulatory clarity. It's been through a lawsuit. That's their choice. We'll see whether BlackRock wants to be pro-American or pro-Chinese and pro-legal clarity or are they going to roll the dice again with something with fake regulatory clarity? Then Air Edward Snowden posts a prediction. A national government will be revealed this year to have been buying Bitcoin, the modern replacement for monetary gold, without having disclosed that fact publicly. And I retweeted it said, or the go a national government will announce that they created Bitcoin. <laughs> How about that? Oh, me. Even Edward Snowden knows the facts here. All right. More uh, Bitcoin narrative carrying on CNBC. When you look at what's been driving this price action on Bitcoin, Matt, how much of this is retail investors investing directly in Bitcoin? How much of it is the ETF? How much of it is institutions uh, in the ETF? Absolutely. It's a great question. We're seeing enormous demand for the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF and across all of these ETFs. And the answer is it's all of those categories. You're seeing retail investors come into these ETFs. You're seeing hedge funds. You're seeing RIAs or independent financial advisors. I think there's an even bigger wave coming in a few months as we start to see the major wirehouses turn on. But this has been Bitcoin's IPO moment. It's in a new era of price discovery. And I think prices could go substantially higher from here. Uh, let's talk about where they can go in just a minute, but I just want to go back to this idea of who you think is buying these ETFs, meaning how much of this is retail versus institutions? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when these ETFs first launch, 
They're not turned on at the major wirehouses, at the major institutions. So the initial demand out of the gate for any ETF, including these, is primarily retail and independent financial advisors and hedge funds. So I think that's the primary driver. That's what we're seeing. Right. But I'll tell you, after this meeting, I'm getting on a plane to go talk to one of the largest institutional consultants in the U.S. about this ETF. So right. we're going to see that next wave of institutional you, capital. You, you did mention hedge funds, which I will put in sort of an institutional institutional or professional category. In terms of this big move, do you, do you think it's that money that's pushed this or do you think it's straight retail? Oh, I think it's I think it's both. I think it's both. It's just new demand. If you think about Bitcoin pre the ETFs, there was only a small set of investors who could buy it. Now, almost everyone can buy it. And the supply demand dynamic is just off the hook. There are 30,000 uh, Bitcoin purchased by ETFs this week alone. Bitcoin miners have only created less than 3,000. That's what's driving the price. And it's both hedge funds and retail and. All right. And who? Advisor community. Financial advisor community. Okay, check this out. Crypto Bull says the long term price channel shows the most realistic XRP price between $13 and $39. Uh, XRP did hit 60 cents. Yesterday it had hit 60 cents when Bitcoin hit around 64. Then the market crashed. And now the market has built right back up to where it was pretty much. And here's Coin Market Cap if you want to take a look here. We've got a, XRP is holding strong at 60, above 60 cents. Bitcoin's at 63, approaching that 64 again. I'll skip that for the purposes of this video. At the Digital Euro Conference, we have Ripple and all these Ripple people. I know these guys, that's Anthony Welfare and that's, uh, oh man, I'm drawing a blank on his name. I showed him the other day. Ah, let's see that guy's name anywhere down here. Anyway, sorry, man. I'll remind everybody next time. They're in Frankfurt, Germany. And I want to remind everybody before we go to DAIXRP.com, read this article right here. I touched on this stuff in, in uh, the group uh, yesterday or in the earlier video, the video before this one. Um, this, uh, and this is a shout out to Deaton for Senate. When you start debating Senator Warren, she wants to talk about crypto and money laundering. Well, that's fine. Bring up FTX, Ukraine, and Tether, because she does not want to talk about those three things and crypto. Because her party is involved directly. Probably, and, and it looks like there's a lot of money laundering going on. So if I'm John Deaton and I'm debating her, that's what I want to talk about. Oh, yeah, let's talk about crypto money laundering. I would know Ukraine and FTX inside and out. I'd know everybody that got money from that deal, including whether Elizabeth Warren got money. That would I'd have my talking points. Now we're gonna go into DAIXRP.com and we're gonna find out what we're gonna talk about what would happen if XRP got the next BlackRock ETF. What could the XRP prices look like in that scenario? What do I think the XRP prices would look like in that scenario? I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Come into DAIXRP.com if you want to find out. We're going to have a little discussion about what would that ETF do to the XRP price. Alrighty, here we go. 